Student commencement speaker Jose Martinez is a shining example of the results commitment, determination, and perseverance can bring. Jose came to the United States in 1997 from abject poverty in rural Santa Ana, El Salvador. Speaking very little English, he quickly found himself significantly challenged and forced to relearn all basic communication skills. He kept at it, however, realizing that mastering the English language be essential to his success in this country. Jose enrolled in North Shore in January 2011 to study marketing and maintains a 4.0 GPA as he approaches graduation in three semesters. Three semesters. In addition to taking six courses each semester, he found time to do a four-month internship in Governor Duval Patrick's office. Thanks to his perfect 4.0 average, Jose has been awarded the Merit-Based Foster Furcolo Scholarship from UMass Boston, given each year to only one student from each of the 15 community colleges. The scholarship includes a full two years of tuition and fees. It's with great pride I'd like to welcome our student speaker, Jose Martinez, to the podium. Thank you, President Burton, Board of Trustees, Salem State University President, uh, Dr. Patricia mcguire messervey and other members of the Platform Party. Thank you, distinguished faculty, staff, honored guests, families, friends, and thank you, class of 2012. <laughs> Graduates, we deserve to be here on this momentous occasion. We all have earned it the accomplishments that we celebrate tonight and the time that we have shared collectively will be forever written on our hearts, on our minds, and in our souls. As uh, President Burton said, I officially began as a full-time student in the spring of 2011. And with hard work and determination, I've earned my degree in a little over a year. It is my honor to represent the student body tonight during our graduation. Renowned psychologists, Victor Frankl said, what you have experienced, no power on earth can take from you. For me, those experiences began in poverty in Santa Ana, Salvador, and culminate in my standing before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. When I moved to the United States in 1897 at the age of 17, I knew only simple English words. Many of them, all of them, were off-color words that I would use inappropriately around people who afterward looked like they wanted to beat me senseless. Not knowing the culture or language made things very difficult for me, particularly in school. Back in El Salvador, I was accustomed to being an excellent student. However, when I arrived to this country, as many of you have, I was forced to learn basic communication skills all over again. I wish that I could say everything went smoothly and predictably after that. That I attended college right after high school and that my life became a series of promotions and remarkable career opportunities. I opted instead to take a decent paying job in an effort to support my family. I do not regret this decision for two reasons. Supporting my family has always been my priority. Moreover, I wasn't ready yet, emotionally or intellectually for the rigors of a college education. A few uneventful years passed in the workforce until I met uh, a remarkable woman in 2006 who later became the love of my life. She inspired me to reconsider the college. For me, it began with a gift. She gave me a copy of the concise Oxford Dictionary. Inside, she inscribed the following. Now you will never have an excuse for not understanding me. <laughs> Description continue with, I eagerly anticipate this being the dictionary that you use for your college education. May the words contained within free you as they have me. Several major events occurred in the years that follow, chief among them being the loss of my stable job. Here I was, at 28 years old, an unskilled laborer, 
without work or any prospect of work. Quite suddenly, I found both my bank account and career prospects disappearing. I admit that, at least at first, my impetus to enroll in college a few years later was not due to my innate love of learning. Truthfully, I was confronted with the harsh reality that hardly anyone is given an opportunity without a college education. My turning point came while I was working at a distribution center and kept unsuccessfully trying to get a job on the sales floor of the same company. Even at my second job as a busboy at a Salem restaurant, management would not give me the opportunity to be a waiter. After wearing down a pair of brand new shoes in less than a month, I felt overwhelmed by the limitations of my, profession, of my, of my professional existence. I was earning an average of about $5 an hour. The hard data spoke volumes to me. I quit that job with my fiance's blessing and enrolled full time the following semester, despite the reduced income and need for the student loans. What a different world academia is, ladies and gentlemen. We are very fortunate to be part of an institution that encourages critical thinking, creativity, and intellectual exploration. I was accustomed to being told in the so-called real world what I would never achieve. However, now we have professors telling me to set my goals as high as possible to seemingly impossible levels, and that even a formerly unsophisticated Latino immigrant like me can change the world. Thank you to my sociology professor. Thank you. Thank you to my sociology professor, Dr. Annalisa Gibson Murphy for that, and the rest of my professors. <laughs> Suddenly, graduate school at Harvard University is within my reach. Fellow graduates, let us always look back fondly at our time at North Shore, from the sleepless nights when we were studying for the exams to the countless hours spent in the computer labs obsessively perfecting our essays. Each minute spent was in preparation for a lifetime of learning and future achievement. Time may have passed quickly, but the memories will remain forever. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are living proof that with effort and belief in oneself, anything is possible. It does no matter where we come from, what gender, sexual orientation, or color we are, we are here tonight because each one of us turned our beliefs into action. But graduates, though tonight we celebrate our achievement, education is an eternal process. Tonight is not the end, but rather the first step on the path of our collective enlightenment. We must keep preparing ourselves for the challenges and obstacles that lie ahead. Many years from now, we will look back on tonight as the pivotal moment to alter the course of our lives. Our individual paths will unavoidably diverge, but we will be forever united this evening in academic unity. I encourage everyone to view setbacks as opportunities because no one should ever purchase the reality that detractors try to sell us. Our experiences do not limit us. Our attitudes do. In conclusion, Viktor Frankl also said, we who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away the last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. My fellow graduates, keep in mind two words as you move forward. Always and never. Always believe in yourselves. And never, for one second, think that you are done. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my honor to speak to you tonight. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>